There's definitely a, um, an issue with the residential. Um, the market right now is very, very hot, and everybody is questioning is there a re res residential bubble, in, especially around the major cities. And there's pros and cons uh, towards whether it's a bubble or not. Um, we look at it from a little bit different perspective, and that is that there's fairly, there's actually not really a professional letting market at all in, in, in Norway. The largest, uh, and that is one of the municipalities actually, the largest um, owner of, of rent to let, apartments to let, has two, about 2,000 flats. Um, that is very, very little in a city like Oslo. So when we look at the, 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 demog the expected demographic population growth in Oslo, and we look at how much they actually built at the moment and what's left. Um, you could say, would there be a bubble? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's supply and demand. And, and the supply is, is not that big at the moment, and demand is quite high. On the other hand, at one point, the Norwegians can't borrow money enough to actually pay the, the, for the flats. Right now, it's up to 100,000 Norwegian krona, which is about uh, 13,000 euros for a square meter uh, a, per square meter apartment in the best locations in, in Oslo. It's crazy compared to Oslo. Probably not to certain places uh, in London and everything, but it, for Oslo, it's crazy. So yes, there is definitely a bubble. The question is, will the um, very strong economy of Norway and the supply demand, will that actually prolong this bubble until it bursts, or will it burst within the next few years? What we see with Norway is that there's a number of, of funds, and you can probably elaborate on that, that has to close within the next few years. Uh, so there's a number of properties coming on the market. Um, with regards to office, there are two areas that are, uh, are of interest. It's Stavanger because of the uh, oil and gas industry, and it's Oslo. Uh, but there's also a number of new buildings being um, um, constructed and has been constructed in Oslo. So what we actually look into quite a lot is the conversion. Conversion of office space into something else. That is very interesting, and we think that's very interesting in, in Copenhagen as well. Um, also, another thing is you actually have the <coughs> highest um, purchasing power in, in the world, actually, at the moment. It's second highest, I think, in Norway. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, until a year ago, you couldn't see brands such as Gucci or something in Norway. Even though all the tourists are buying in Norway, it's the cheapest place to buy all these luxury brands, but you didn't really have them. The high street area was not a high street area that you would expect in one of the strongest purchasing powers countries per capita. Uh, so that's uh, something else that we look into. And, and Madison just invested in, uh, in Soylent, who is actually looking into this. So there's a number of things going on that we find very interesting for Norway. Because I agree, e-commerce is going to go up, but that's going to go up more in the province. I don't think it's going to go up in the middle of the cities because you still want to go out and touch it. There's a human aspect to it that if you can, you will. Um, and there, so that's something that we, um, we look into. For Denmark, shortly for us, it's, it's Resi. There's definitely uh, interest there um, through our funds or direct investments. We do both funds and direct investments, and so indirect and direct, uh, together with our investors. We are looking very much into the fact that the square meter price of, of um, residential units took a hit during the crisis. And now it's coming up. So right now, for us, it's the time to go in, buy apartments that are actually condominium divided. And then whenever the tenants are moving out, we're privatizing it, meaning we're selling the apartments one by one. Very interesting in turn of uh, IRRs that we're getting there. And a big part of the Danish market is basically the, a different kind of residential type, um, which is more like the German, um, but it's called sort of cost-based where you can go in and if you modernize the facades and you put in you know, doorbells and all these things, um, balconies, you can increase the rent. If you then go in and put in a new ki kitchen, so, so you can increase the rent and you can actually come up to market rents. And that is very interesting when you're looking at the market rent is more than 
double sometimes, um, 300% compared to what they're paying right now. That is an interesting play. And then with regards to financing, um, from our point of view, all of the Nordic region, no issue. But that's because we come with equity. And that is what's lacking in a lot of these countries um, for the more risk uh, people is, is, is equity. And that's also why there hasn't been a lot of investments done in Finland. It's because the equity has not been there.